you could write something down like an intention and you could forget about it. And I guess that was probably part of that master manifest thing, like just letting it, releasing it after you, after putting the, that goal down, that desire down and then releasing it. And then of course, there's always like, I'm not a sit back and don't do anything person. You still have to keep your eyes open. And when you see an opportunity, take it and move forward, move through it and experience it because that's that opportunity might be what the manifestation is. It's like, it's coming to you through this, but you need to do it, you know? I'm here with Kate Trotter. Is it Kate Hi. Trotter? Well, <laughs> not recently, but yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm here with, with Kate Trotter, no, uh, known as Kate Trotter. That's your alias. It is my alias. Yeah. Your alias. I love it. <laughs> From Taya Bootcamp, recent graduate, uh, we want to hear from you. We want to hear about your experiences applying the Taya practice in your life. Uh, you you came into bootcamp. Um, I think you call yourself a master manifester, right? Yeah, yeah, I got that one. That one was our. That one. That one actually just manifesting consciously started when I started listening to your podcast back in like August of last summer. And I was able to then kind of be like, we sort of tested it out a little bit and then saw like how fast it really did. It just, you know, it, it did it, how fast it, everything would come together. But I was also a stress mess. And so <laughs> that was why I ended up going into boot camp. What, you know, some people go in, I think, you know, to learn manifesting, to, to create the life that they think they want. But then other, other people like me were like, yeah. I need some help learning how to overcome some fear and anxiety issues and they weren't serving me at all anymore. And so that was, that was why I went in particularly. And I, I love that, uh, that you were already considering yourself a master manifester and knew that there were more things that you wanted to work on. So you got into boot camp, mm -hmm. and you're, you, you were a, a lovely addition to boot camp. You brought a lot of positive energy and a lot of good information and I, I think the other people that went through with you were really appreciative of everything that you brought and in, in your realness, you know, not just sunshine all the time. <laughs> well, this practice isn't about that, right? We're, we're not about, and if you're, if you're new to listening to this podcast, uh, yes, this is a stream of David podcast, but we talk about Taya a lot on here and Taya is the practical application of the streams teachings. And we've created this mindset practice around what the stream, the channeled message that I share uh, brings to us because for me, the channeled message always made a lot of sense, but then applying it in my life took a system. Mm -hmm. And so we created the system. And boot camp is a great place to learn the system, but we talk about it on here constantly because mm -hmm. my hope is that everyone is picking up parts of this practice and learning about vibrational flow and all of these things that we learn about in the practice. Boot camp are, are not or not ready for it yet or whatever the status is. And that's why I love having all of you on here that go through the program because you can get out and share what really worked, what you're still working on and how you're applying it now that you're out. How long have you been out now? Oh, um, month and a half, maybe around a month and a half. It was yeah, June, so you, mid June. You moved through really some June. vibrational flow in, in six weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think anytime you stop something like a, a boot camp style practice. So anytime you stop a, a system that is you're dedicating your time to, and that you're like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do the set this intention journal, and I'm going to take these steps and I'm going to challenge myself to not look away when I'm faced with, you know, I've heard people call it the shadow work or the, you know, the negative side of who we are really and negative and positive again, even that being something that you learn about. Um, that it's just perception really, but it, it was like, it was really interesting stepping and graduating because I think there was a whole big part of me. It was like, no, 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 no. Like I'm not ready. But at the same time, I'm like, I did learn what I needed to learn. And I, but I, you know, healing and becoming like a person who really masters your energy level, whether you're in positive energy or negative energy is a lifetime. Like, that is definitely a lifetime. So there's also kind of like, I felt like I had to kind of get like, go, Kate, you're good. <laughs> you know how to do this. And it was true. I do. But I still was like, 
a little bit of like, I want my crutch. I want that crutch still. I want to be able to like lean on the other people that, you know, the coaches and, and the other people in the camp, everybody that we did this together and lean on them still. So that, that of course was why I was like, yeah, I want to do the expanded because I also am somebody that really does better when there's accountability in some form for me. So, you know, post boot camp, there's definitely been some time where I forget that I know how to handle things and I'm lost in just the old behavioral patterns of like, you know, running around, hammering away, trying to do everything and always thinking if I just keep pushing harder and I don't give up and I keep working harder, doing something more, I will achieve the outcome that I want. And learning how to stop doing that and just be like, the outcome I want, you know, yeah, I can, I can keep hammering away at that and I can, I can make that outcome come for me, but that might not be the outcome that I need. And learning how to be like, okay, this is about stepping back and saying like, let the outcome that I need be the outcome that comes from this, as opposed to trying to control everything all the time. Yeah. Best, best possible outcome. And and for those of us who are type A's, you and I both are, the, the putting down the hammer and just allowing the best possible outcome, that's, that's a whole vibrational shift in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. And the big tenacity, one. tenacity is a good thing, right? We yeah. get things done. Th- those, those type A personalities are the ones that mm-hmm. do tend to get things done. There are creative people that dream things up, but you need a doer <laughs> to get things done. And, and I, pride myself on being a creative person and then a creative person who can also execute and get things done. Yeah. But my getting things done can very often turn into hammering. And luckily I have enough people around me in my business now where they'll say, put down the hammer already, you know, because Mm -hmm. if something isn't working, it always goes back to that for me. It always goes back to, I am trying too hard. I want it too bad. I need it too much. And we have to remember the universe is always just answering yes. So when we're trying so hard because mm-hmm. we need it, the universe is always going to say, yes, you need it. And yeah. you're going to stay in that perpetual state of need. And that's why the, the the marker keeps moving out, right? When you're hammering. Yeah. It's like the guy, you know, what is it when they, there's an analogy about like, there's the guy in, in the, you know, on, you know, there's a guy walking, looking at the guy on the bicycle, wishing he had a bicycle, the guy on the bicycle is looking at the guy, you know, in the Honda wishing he had a Honda and the guy in the Honda is looking at the, you know, at, you know, the Beamer and wishing he had a Beamer and the guy in the Beamer wants the Bentley. And it just, you know, we, we keep, and that's part of life too, is that we, you know, many of us want to keep striving for the next thing, the next, or the next accomplishment or the next, you know, it doesn't have to be a physical thing, but like, the chase, that being a part of life that many of us have always been in the pattern of the chase, like chasing the next thing and learning how to recognize that myself and see like, holy crap, you know, I doing that chase your whole life takes you completely out of appreciation. Like you have to be able to stop and see where you are right then in that moment and, and then, and then be like, this is awesome because you're never going to like, it was that realization. I will never be happy if I'm always looking ahead at what there could be next. Because I'm also one of those people that thinks anything is possible and I can, you know, achieve anything I want. And I, you know, I have that, that confidence that like, if any, if somebody's done it, then it's doable. And if they haven't done it, that still means they just haven't done it yet. That doesn't mean I can't, you know, like we don't know what we're going to do in our life. Like I don't put limits on it. But I definitely see how that wasn't serving me either. And then in my family life, that was really taking me away from the experience of motherhood and being a partner to somebody and being present with them and finding like a different level of of like appreciation for all of that. Because even though if you had asked me, I'd been like, yeah, of course I appreciate my kids. But I also was always looking for the next thing, you know? So that was big for sure. And I think a lot of people probably can relate to that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think all humanity can because we are, the stream says we are expansive by nature 
meaning we seek expansion in some way. We are mm -hmm. seeking something else, something new. And, that, and look at all of the things as humanity that we create because we want more. You know, there's all in technology. Gosh, uh, technology has sped up so much in the last 20 years. Yeah. Since, since the iPhone and, and all of those things came around. It's sort of like, I remember the 70s, uh, all, all of a sudden there were VCRs and microwave ovens and that was about it for the 70s, you know. <laughs> and then we moved to the 80s and, you know, I think compact discs came out around the end of that time. And, you know, the mm -hmm. technolo technology just wasn't moving as quickly. And then we get into the 90s and, you know, the internet takes off and, and you know, all of these, uh, you know, internet uh, centric things take off and you think, gosh, this is everything now. Everything's been created. No clue that there would be such a powerful device in our pockets mm -hmm. with apps and all of these things. It's just this amazing technology that's going to change everything. Who knows mm -hmm. what's next? And so that wanting more and striving for more, I think, is a valuable component of the human experience. But we can't allow that to, and that's what Taya is very about. It's not allowing that to overshadow the joy in the now. Yeah. Yeah. Balancing that stuff. Yeah. Because no matter what, like life does give you positive and negative experiences, no matter what. And I, yeah. I think about no matter like, who you are, no matter right? who you are. Yeah. And I, I think it's really cool to look at people I've always admired in my life and to see how they even in some really hard times, like walked out of them with deep appreciation for those experiences and the positives they brought them. And I mean, and that's essentially like, it's, that's such a gift learning to do that and learning to look at your experiences, even with the most negative ones with that filter of like, you know, I, this doesn't have to be a negative thing because we all know everything we experience is going to take us to the next place in our life. It's we're always going to be growing and developing from whatever happens to us and whatever we're exposed to. So how can it be a bad thing? You know, like even when we think it's bad, like it's all taking us forward. It's all bringing us along our journeys. Um, you know, in well, learning about you touched on a huge, huge, huge component of the Taya practice. It's really being at peace with the negative. And that's yeah. what's really different about this than other spiritual practices, especially law of attraction rooted practices where it's just be happy, think about what you want and that's it. And, and, yeah. and it all comes and everything's perfect. It's not, I we're not I've ever perfection. manifested in that way. Like yeah. I've never been able to be like, I will only be happy. And then if I just focus on the happy, good, I'm going to get what it is I'm trying to get. Cause I'm like, that's all the wrong energy to begin yeah. with. Like, <laughs> you're, you're inevitably going to fail because of vibrational flow that yeah. vibrational flow is going to take us down. Yeah. That doesn't take us down traveling. Well, <laughs> we were talking about that before we went on live, but I won't get too deep into my trip. I'm not, I haven't detuned it enough to even talk about it yet. I need to de I, I'm kind of there though. I'm pretty appreciative of it for what it was, but I just went on vacation for a week and it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> it was not great, but there were great elements yeah. of it. And I think the, the more, uh, for me, enough time has already passed in two days. I've only been home less than 48 hours mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, I can really look back and laugh about it because it's over now. And mm -hmm. it, you know, I survived it and I'm home and I love my home environment. It really made me appreciate my home and my mm -hmm. dog and all these things even more. Uh, but it wasn't perfect. And there were parts of it that really sucked. And that is what the human experience is. This isn't about get every single thing that you want and have the perfect life because nobody is experiencing that. No. Obviously, we're not here for that. We're, we're here for the challenges and the obstacles and finding appreciation for them. That's mm -hmm. the key to happiness. Yeah, and another thing that, that helps is learning how to write your story. Like, you know, we are, we are aware of our consciousness to a certain extent each person of their own consciousness, right? So that's like, what do you know, really know? Like, well, I know I have some level of consciousness because I am in this body and I you know, have my thoughts. And so whatever this is, but like, it's like the matrix. Am I sleeping in a, in a pod in a bubble of water? And then this is just like, nobody else is really there. And this is all in my head. You know, like we don't really know, like we give our beliefs and essentially we're writing our stories. And so we can write this story as a victim. We can write this story as a hero. We can, you know, you, you choose how you're going to approach your life and that's your reality. Like 
that is another really powerful thing. I think that post boot camp having that perspective really helped me. And uh, one of the big things was de the detuning of fear, and then fear itself, not just my fears. We had to work had to work through those and face those, but then actually being able to be like, fear is not working against me. Fear is a tool, just like every other experience, that there is something I can appreciate in. And you know, that just being able to live in a non-fear space was the greatest gift. <laughs> like so big. And then there's so many other cool things that have come from it. But you know, like your trip, I, I remember I was, I've been in like multiple flash floods. And I remember living in Miami, because we talked about that before, being in Miami, and I was in a flash flood. And I managed to get my car into, it was on South Beach, and I managed to get my car out of my apartment's driveway, driving it down West Ave. There's water coming over the hood. And I get it into a parking garage by like Whole Foods Market down there. And I'm walking back, and there's like this mint plant that had blown off somebody's porch. And I'm like, God damn it, I'm taking this mint plant with me. <laughs> like, I've always wanted a mint plant. That would be $12 at Whole Foods. <laughs> Right. And then I take, I drag that thing out of the water and, you know, get into my house and I'm like, well, can't live here. <laughs> it's like feet of water in there everywhere. And I'm like, all right. So we, and we got, we found a crash pad, you know, from a family member wasn't there. Like they had a crash pad. Yeah, you can stay there. And I remember we, we ended up being there for three months because we were homeless. Um, and did you take your free mint plant with you from your, yes. Family? We would sit on that balcony, watching the sunsets over the water, drinking mojitos with that damn mint plant. And Sam and I, like my husband- Your consolation for becoming uh, temporarily homeless is a free <laughs> mint plant. <laughs> to this day, we still talk about like how great the mojito happy hour was when we were essentially squatting like at somebody's like crash pad that they didn't need it, but were there like, you can't stay forever because it's not even really mine. You know, I don't own it. Um, and we're just like, we drink those mojitos and you're like, so we could have been like all of our furniture is destroyed and we are starting over and we don't have any money and we're going, the landlord is suing us for leaving. How would we, you know, all the negative things you could have been stuck in. And instead we're like, God damn, this is a beautiful sunset and this view kicks butt and these are good mojitos. And like, we just kept ourselves in that space and everything works out, you know, but it's like, yeah, if you're still yeah. breathing, there's something to appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can find it, you know? And like, that's, again, it's the stories that we tell ourselves, like, are you the victim or is this an opportunity for an experience? Like, how are you going to, how are you going to tell this to yourself? What is it going to be? I love it. Good perspective. Really good perspective. So back to six weeks out of boot camp, and you, you were going into <laughs> Uh, expanded, which we just created for post boot camp. Uh, it's an additional program that you can jump into after boot camp if you so choose. It's interesting that uh, I, I stay in touch with a lot of the boot campers. Uh, some of them I lose touch with over time, uh, but I do stay in touch with most of the boot campers. And we have the big reunion that we're now doing twice a year, and we get to see most of the people show up to that, which is really fun. So we have built this big community of, of boot campers, boot camp graduates, and when we started the expanded program, I reached out to a lot of them. And, and one of the best answers that I got was from Margaret from Iceland. She's, uh, her testimonial is on the, the YouTube channel. And she's like, I don't need that. I'm doing great. <laughs> and she's been out for months. And she started sending me pictures of all these things that she's wow. manifested, her dream home. Wow. Dream home. She says, I've always wanted this two-story white house with this beautiful garden. And I would mm -hmm. picture myself coming down the steps into the garden. She lives in Iceland. So houses are a little different there than they are here. And she, uh, you know, talked about this house has the, the, the lower floor garden with steps going down into it. And Aww. they made an offer and their offer was the one that was selected out of multiple offers. And it was just like the perfect manifestation and she's doing great. Mm -hmm. And, it, and I love hearing that. I love hearing that. And everybody is different. When you go through the, the boot camp, you get out, you don't know until you get out what you need next. You know, you, you may be exactly in the place to use this for the rest of your life. And I hear from you once a year, or you may be somebody that wants to stick around and be part of the community or even be in the coaching of it or, or something like that. So I love that we've created all of these different avenues with this practice now as it expands. 
yeah. uh, the expanded program. I'm real excited to get that going because we have such a great group of graduates that are going, are going into it now. It's going to yeah. be a lot of fun to, to work is. together in a much lighter way for a year. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm so excited. I like there's, there's people in the expanded program that I wasn't in boot camp with, and there's some that were, and then there's some people I've just seen chiming in on the Facebook pages and things like that for like, well, almost a year, because yeah. that was about how long ago I got introduced to the stream of David and this whole world. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited to get to like, go through this with a new, like new and old group and meet some of these people more. Yeah. And so talk about your, your family, how they're responding or, or what they've noticed about you. It's amazing and incredible and kind of intimidating sometimes. Um, so I have definitely, I'm pretty open about the fact that, you know, my, my husband and I have been together for a long time. We've been together for 20 years. And so we were kids, you know, when we first became more than friends. Um, and when you've been with somebody that long, you have gone through a lot of different life. And so there are times where we've done like couples counseling and, you know, we have different things in our life that have brought us together, things that we felt like we started to grow apart and then come back in. And there's been this push pull, um, but we always keep choosing each other and choosing to stick with it. And, you know, obviously continuing to give it everything we have. And it's really interesting because the self-awareness that came out of learning the Taya, the trust your abundance practice is really intense. Like there's a lot of self-awareness that you get. Um, and, you know, I don't think I'm telling him things now in any different way than I used to, but his receptiveness to them, it's like this relationship is changing that like now, like he wouldn't, where before he may have felt attacked if I said something that could have been interpreted negative and like that is happening less and less and less and less. And that's strengthening the relationship we have because I'm feeling safe telling him more honestly, like this is what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling or how this is making me feel. And, you know, just being like, and maybe I need to look into that. And then sometimes I might be like, I'm not sure this is a me thing. So I don't know what you're looking for me from. Like, what do you want from me about this? Whereas before I would have always been trying to fix things and trying to make a perfect world, but not really an honest world. Um, and that definitely wasn't serving us as a couple, having me try to protect him and whatever was going on around him to keep it kind of like this perfect place. Um, you know, I'm, I'm much more like, there might be some things that you don't really like about me very much but you can choose to be with me or not. Because if those are true, then that's who I am. And like, I have to trust you to make that choice. Like I can't trick you into thinking you have a perfect world and a perfect life and perfect kids and nothing is ever gonna go wrong or bother you. Cause that's not what's happening and that's not what's ever been happening. So being that much more honest with myself brought the honesty back into the relationship which brought us a lot closer. Cause I was like finally trusting him to handle stuff that may not be perfect. It may not be positive, you know? So that was really big. Um, my kids were definitely like, one of them was living in a fear space that was really intense. Um, and we, you know, I was able to like in boot camp see that was coming from me because I was in a fear space all the time. And he was just picking up on the energy that I kept putting out there. And, you know, when you're afraid of everything, your kids, every time you look around, you're seeing a hazard that could lead to the demise of your children. You're keeping them in this tight little safe space and they're not experiencing anything. So they never really feel safe because they're never learning that they can be safe doing normal stuff. Um, so I've loosened the reins on that a lot. <laughs> and now when he's scared, we talk a lot more honestly about like, well, what's scaring you? And how, how, what's the worst thing that could happen? And so if that happens, then what happens next? You know, so we kind of ask questions to bring him through, letting him talk it out as opposed to overprotective parenting styles that were happening before. So um, it's been really amazing. I don't think anything negative has come in my family environment from 
tired. Just it's just it's just been more work for me to not fall into those old habits. And are you, you know, finding that it's getting easier to just be on autopilot with that, or are you still having to work at it? I still have to work at it. So um, there's definitely some that it is getting easier, but I still have to catch myself. And I'll note I'll usually notice it if I start going like down the spiral a little bit, and then I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Okay, step back, Kate. Like, do I need to write that? I'll ask myself, do I need to write this out? Do I already know what's going on here? Um, how do I need to approach this in a way that is going to be bringing the greatest good to the situation? And then I kind of trust that whatever comes next will be in line with that because, you know, you essentially set that intention and then you're really, you can release the fear of making the wrong choice because you're like, well, if the choice that I make leads to a lesson that is hard that I learn and maybe next time I make a different choice because of it, then I still needed to do that. I still needed to learn that. So it's been really, it's been really cool, but it definitely hasn't become autopilot all the time yet. Yeah. Well, I don't know that it ever complete. Well, I, I think the detuning and appreciation for me is definitely autopilot. Um, but you, you still get caught off guard in vibrational flow because when your, your vibrational flow goes down, you're down there without the same skill set that you have when you're up mm -hmm. and you can kind of get caught in that darkness. If you're not, I don't want to say careful because careful is not really the right word to use. Um, you know. I, I think back to my week on yeah. vacation when I was, I was out of my element and mm -hmm. that being out of my element and, you know, layering on top of that, the stress of travel, which is stressful for just about mm -hmm. anybody. I think at this point, it's a lot different now. We were talking about, you know, now as opposed to pre COVID, it is different. Mm -hmm. There's more angst in the air around travel. It's not as yeah. fun as it used to be. And, you know, the mask thing is a big deal for some people. Uh, I was sharing with you that our flight didn't uh, take off. We were delayed almost an hour because someone refused to put a mask on. And it's like you hour. Got, you know, the flight crew <laughs> digging their heels in about someone not wearing a mask and the person not wearing the mask digging their heels in about that when we know when we book the flight and have to go to the airport that it's yeah. required everywhere. I and, mean, and that's a great example of like, what is it really about? Because we know that's not about a mask, you know? That's the mask is well, the not mask wanting to is be a told mask to for whatever yeah. the real issue is here. Yeah. I don't want to be told what to do. So I'm going to dig my heels in and insist. And and, and what do you think you're going to accomplish on a flight? Right. You know, post 9-11, you just don't have you know, <laughs> the idea of customer service. And I, I'm the customer and I'm always right. That's yeah. way, way in the past at this point on an airline. Come on. So, yeah. 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 It was an interesting experience to be to delayed for multiple reasons on multiple flights on this trip. I won't get into all that, but that one flight where you're hearing that we're all sitting here for an extra hour of my vacation time because someone in the back is refusing to put a mask on. Yeah. Yeah. That person could probably do some work detuning that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I could, I could, should have just gotten up and started talking tie out of the whole plane. I'm sure that would have been. Here, give me the intercom. <laughs> we're going to talk about detuning transgressors, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> While we wait for this to play out <laughs> well, without bloodshed in the back. <laughs> yeah, I bet, you know, I, I would have loved to have seen that happen, actually. <laughs> but let's find appreciation for the delay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's that was that's my detuning, right? Yeah. <laughs> to find appreciation for the delays. And that stuff's over. Who cares? That's all done. Uh, there, you know, two days later, there's nothing to detune about the trip. I can laugh about all of it now. Mm -hmm. Again, no, none of it was life threatening or or anything uh, of that nature whatsoever. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I had to detune my dog. Uh, my my dog Lola stayed with her uh, her grandmother, <laughs> her nana, for a week, and uh, her nana spoils her <laughs> big time. Oh. And I have this picture of her in the back seat of the uh, the SUV coming home, and her little head's down. <laughs> She's not happy. <laughs> she was not happy to see us at all. <laughs> You just kind of what you know she's a french bulldog they're not exactly the same personality you know a lot of dogs lose their mind every time you walk in the door right yeah lola's not like that sometimes she's happy to see us and sometimes she barely bothers to get up mm -hmm. and this time we came back after six days and she just kind of walked up and sniffed and that was that she was like 
darn it. <laughs> oh, you're back. You know, I'm getting fed roast beef constantly, you know, and, and sleeping wherever I want, doing all this sort of thing. So we brought her yeah. home and she was a little down. She didn't sleep. Oh. Uh, she has a bed she sleeps in in our bedroom and uh, she didn't sleep in there. She slept on the sofa all night, the first night. So she oh. had to, she had oh. to decompress from the, the nano vibration. <laughs> So I, I think that's like a Nana thing. Like they yeah. do it with their grand dogs or grandkids. They're like, I'm, I don't have to be the bad guy. I could just spoil you and enjoy every minute. Of it. And she knows the word Nana. You say Nana and his little ears turn. She definitely perks up. But that's one of her uh, buzzwords. Oh yeah. 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 It's part of her vocabulary now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so post tie a life. Uh, you know, it's again, it's interesting just hearing from all of you how you're implementing, how you're doing. I'm glad that you've kept the journaling. Were you a journaler before you got into boot camp? Rarely. There were periods of my life where I knew that it was powerful and that I had I had always known like if I needed to work out something big, it could be a tool I would use, but I really wouldn't pick it up otherwise. Um so I really would only usually pick it up if I was trying to work through something monumentous. And then I would just write and write until I finally got to a place of peace with it. Like I was releasing it in the act of writing, but it would be rare. So like maybe a, once a year, I might pick up a journal. <laughs> like it wasn't frequent. And so you, you journal in boot camp as part of boot camp. And a lot mm -hmm. of people, it's funny when they get into boot camp, they're always saying, I, I can't meditate. And I hate journaling. And mm -hmm. I promise them that by the time they get out, they will find their path to whatever their meditation is, which I believe yeah. is unique to everyone. Yeah. And they'll probably love journaling. And most of you do. Yeah, it's it's so effectively powerful. And I think that learning that you can really just set an intention to journal about whatever it is that you need to get out. You could be really like vague about it, like show me, you know, help me get through something that I need to get through that I'm hanging on to and may not even realize. Or you could be really just like, let's see what happens. Um, or, you know, or it could be like, I'm going to talk about this specific transgressor, this one thing. Um, but, you know, I used to only do it for these really big deal things. And because I, I think I would resist it until it was like a sink or swim moment. Um, so seeing just how easy it is to use that tool to learn your self-awareness of what you're really thinking and what you're, how you're really thinking about this, what's really going on here. You know, it, I think the journaling is just incredibly powerful for that. And you just can be more honest. The pace of it too. Think about the pace of, of writing. Like it gives you just enough time to get your next thoughts together. So you can kind of keep keep going with this conversation with yourself. At least that's, I find that about yeah. why. Well, it's, it's a form of channeling. And that's what I love about it is that you are tapping into your own version of the stream. If, you're, if your vibe is up above neutral and you're writing, you're in that creative stream space. Mm -hmm. And if you're, again, if you're new to the, the concept or the podcast, we talk about neutral a lot on the spiral and the spiral is this vibrational spiral where when we're up in positive emotion, we're source connected. And then when we're down below neutral or anything less than that, we are less and less and less connected to source, mm -hmm. the source of all creation, which makes us our creative being and neutral is not a place where we spend a lot of time. The way we refer to neutrality is no thought. That's where, you know, the goal of meditation is to reach that, that place of no thought to allow your nor normal, your natural source connection to be realized. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. Because you're always connected to source. It's just right. when you're up the spiral. Re realizing it or not. Are you drowning right. it out? Or are you allowing yeah. it to flow? And when you're up, you're allowing it to flow. And when you're down in negative emotion, beating yourself up, judging yourself, judging other people, being envious, being frustrated, Mm -hmm. All of that, that lower right. vibrational thinking, and you know how, yeah. how, where you are by how you feel. Yeah. And it's important to understand that all creativity, all new thought occurs above neutral. Everything below neutral is recycled thought. And when the stream shared yeah. that, it was this big aha for me, like, ah, we're not capable of solutions down in that lower vibrational space. We're just recycling old ideas Mm -hmm. And we're expansive beings. So we want to create new. We're creating new when we get ourselves above neutral. 
So you get above neutral, you journal and you are channeling and you're setting positive intention. You're writing it down, pen to paper. People use devices. I use devices a lot. A lot of my social media, uh, the, the stuff, if you follow us on Instagram, all of those stream messages, that's done on an iPhone because I will channel and I will type it in while channeling on the iPhone. And then Emily in Australia <laughs> will take that <laughs> note and she'll turn it into a post and put it on Facebook and Instagram. So it's cool that we have the technology to do that, but I still, the pen to paper, there is something magical about that. Yeah. You know, I used to tell every intern that would come to work with me at the first assignment they would always get would be to write a hundred things that they would like to manifest. I wouldn't use those words, but now I have the vocabulary for that, but it was like write a hundred goals or write a hundred things that you want to do in your life or experience or see, or, you know, what, whatever it is. And that was always the first, and it would, it would be a challenge. And I would try and give them about a week. And I'd be like, if you need more time, you need more time. But I was like, you have to write it down too. And then you can put it away and forget about it. But it was amazing the power of that. And, you know, I, I did that in my twenties. And then at five years later, I looked at that list and I was like, I, I haven't even remembered I wrote this. And I was like, I have done probably 40% of these, maybe more. And then pulled it out 10 years later after writing it. And at that point it was like 60, 70% where it had been accomplished. And many of the ones that hadn't been accomplished, I was like, yeah, I really don't want that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really don't want that, <laughs> but I was kind of fun just to see that you could, you could write something down like an intention and you could forget about it. And I guess that was probably part of that master manifest thing. Like just letting it, releasing it after you, after putting the, that goal down, that desire down and then releasing it. And then of course, there's always like, I'm not a sit back and don't do anything person. You still have to keep your eyes open. And when you see an opportunity, take it and move forward, move through it and experience it because that's that opportunity might be what the manifestation is. It's like, it's coming to you through this, but you need to do it, you know? Um, but like, I, I think it was really an amazing activity. And I always gave the power of that. I was always like, it's, it's about the writing. Like it's something about writing it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I really agree with that. And the pen to paper does seem to be quite magical. Although if that's not your thing, don't let that stop you from journaling yeah. on your phone or your laptop or your iPad or, or whatever. Uh, because I, I I have found that I can channel all ways like that. That's a really good point. Uh, and you had a big manifestation that I really want to, I want you to share about your uh, publication of your work oh. when you're in boot camp. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm a photographer and I've been, um, I've been doing, I've been having my own business has been running since 2006 and, um, I hadn't worked in editorial, which is like magazine work for a long time. And when I was in boot camp, you know, just like you were just talking about David, about being in joy and being in the creative space that always little tidbit resonated on a special level with me. Cause I am also a creative who, you know, studied photography and that like nobody's creating anything new. This is always everything you do has been done before was always like a frustrating thing for me because you want to create something new. You want to do something exciting. Um, and that might be for ego purposes or not, but like, ultimately I was like, I'm going to try and apply this be in joy to while I'm working, which has usually been a stressful time because you're also as a photographer, you're the fall guy. So I do, I do commercial shooting. So it's like, there can be bigger productions, a lot of money riding on these. And if not everything doesn't go exactly right, you know, that could be a very big financial hit for a client. But I was like, I'm going to do this entire shoot in a joy space. And so I set the intention to be in joy and to be up my spiral while I was shooting and to just really connect with the people that were there and exceed expectations for everybody, which is now, I almost always set that intention now for all of my shoots. Um, and so I'm in boot camp and I do the shoot and it was down in Charleston and I come back home and a few weeks later, um, I'm tagged on social media and the pictures I took, one of them is in the New York times. And it, it just had to laugh because that had been, you know, an ultimate goal of mine was to be 
you know, published in the New York Times in some form. And um, there it was, that first experience of releasing control and just being in joy and trying to make a beautiful experience for everybody while I'm taking the pictures, as well as create, the, you know, the images that are not just needed, but are going to deliver on a next level. And here they are in this publication. And um, it was pretty awesome. You know, it was a good testament to like, keep setting the intention to be in joy and be up the spiral while you're working. Work doesn't have to be a DTS thing at all. And that was really cool. That's a very good share. That's a good place to uh, end this podcast as well. And that fantastic share and your fantastic journey through Taya Bootcamp and beyond now into Taya Expanded and, uh, and just seeing you apply it in your life and, and, and transform so much in just a few months. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for thanks for leading the journey. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing everything. Thanks. Bye, David. Hi, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you like what we shared here today, and if it inspired you to think differently, even for just a moment, I have something that you're absolutely going to love. It's a full 90 minute masterclass where I've condensed all the knowledge that I've acquired throughout the years after writing two books and helping hundreds of people change their lives. Take the action steps that I share in this masterclass. The only place that I share this is in these masterclasses aside from my Taya Bootcamp program. And if you know our teachings, you know that we're not about rainbows and fairy dust. We are about extreme ownership, claiming the power to transmute anything in your life to something positive, claiming the power to create your life exactly the way that you dream of it. So everything that you're going to learn in the masterclass is something that you can take and apply in your life as soon as you're done watching. So just go to the streamofdavidmasterclass.com and register and take this 90 minute masterclass. It will transform your life. Again, that is the stream of David masterclass.com. Again, if you enjoyed this episode, you are absolutely going to love this masterclass. Thank you again. I'll see you in class.